say, this is embarrassing. Would you believe I left my sermon on my desk? Give me one moment. Okay, thank you. In the meantime, um, please be seated. May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. It is so nice to be with you. I see a lot of new faces. About eight years ago, I was an associate here for two years assisting Father Chris Snow. So I got to know many of you, and it is such a pleasure to be back and to be pleasure to be with people in general. Um, like many of you, I was used to watching services on YouTube. I retired from the thir two churches I was at in November of 2020, so uh, this is a real treat for me. I love this gospel reading because it is so relatable. In many ways, it reminds me of what my home was like growing up. Having a guest stay for dinner was a big occasion. Extra special home-cooked meal with all the trimmings. There was extra cleaning, and the company guest towels were set out in the bathroom. And my sisters and I were expected to pitch in and help get the house ready. Our house was not open concept. When company arrived and were seated in the living room, you could not see or hear what was going on while you were peeling potatoes in the kitchen or setting the table in the dining room. So I can definitely relate to this story. When Jesus comes to Bethany, Martha welcomes Jesus into her home, and she shares the home that she shares with her sister Mary. She then busies herself with the task of serving their guests. Although we are not told precisely what those tasks are, it's a pretty good guess that she's preparing a meal. Meanwhile, her sister Mary sits at Jesus' feet, listening to all he has to say. So I ask you, equal opportunity for hospitality, whether you are the man or the woman of the house, who are you more likely to take after, Mary or Martha? I am really a bit of both. I have two sisters. My older sister is definitely a Martha. So if she is taking care of business, I would sneak out and spend time with the guests. And there is no doubt that this is where I would want to be. My younger sister is definitely a Mary. So if she is the one helping, or not helping as the case may be, I would have to be more like Martha, getting things ready for the guests. Both Mary and Martha knew that Jesus was not like any other guest. Jesus was the teacher, the rabbi, and yet he didn't talk like any other teacher or rabbi. He talked about God in the first person. He talked about the kingdom of God. Jesus talked about how we should live, taking care of of one another. Jesus talked about sharing what we have been given by God. And he talked about being humble and having a servant heart. I would be very surprised if Martha did not want to be in that room listening to Jesus also. But she also knew the customs of the day dictate that her place as a woman was to prepare the meal. Mary, obviously, was not going to let that cultural expectation stop her. Instead, she sat at Jesus' feet. Now, this spot is very important because this is usually reserved for a student learning at the feet of a rabbi, a spot reserved for young men. So when Martha enters the room and interrupts the conversation, Asking if Jesus did not care that Mary had left her to do all the work. She fully expected Jesus to support her and tell Mary to head back into the kitchen and perhaps tell her to act like a lady. But that's not what Jesus did. Martha, Martha, 
You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. I think Jesus was filled with tenderness and understanding in his answer. He was saying, I know your intention is to do good, but this too is very important. Jesus does not criticize Martha for the work she is doing. It is all about her busyness and worry. Perhaps she is rushing around trying to make everything perfect for her special guest, as so many hostesses do. Her worry and distraction prevent her from being truly present with Jesus. The one thing needed is for Martha to receive the gracious presence of Jesus to listen to his words, to know that she is valued not for what she does or how well she does it, but for the sake that she is a child of God. You and I live in a fast-paced society. It is easy to be distracted, to miss what is sitting right in front of us while we reach for the next thing on our to-do list. I know several people who just cannot sit still without feeling guilty about it. We are tempted to measure our worth by how busy we are, by how much we accomplish, or by how well we meet the expectations of others. We need to give ourselves permission to slow down, to know that it is not only okay to be still, but sometimes, It is the only way God can talk to us because we are actually paying attention. Some may identify with Martha this morning, feeling pulled in different directions, feeling worried and distracted by many things. I think we need to be careful here when looking at this passage. Sometimes the hardships of life press in on us begin to crowd everything else out. Some of you might be in that situation right now. There might be an important family crisis, a medical test you are about to face, or waiting for results of a test. You might be preoccupied with a difficulty at work you know you will have to face this week. It might be the non-stop life of having a job and caring for family. None of us can escape the realities of life, and we need not feel guilty about being distracted by these big things popping up into our heads. But that's not what's going on here. In this case, it is all about a decision Martha has made that she could have changed. She is living life choosing to juggle everything at once, and then being worried and distracted over the many things she wants to get done. Mary has chosen what Jesus says is the better than all the things that Martha is doing. Now I started this sermon asking whether you are more like Mary or Martha. Are we listening? Or are we distracted? You may be thinking that unlike Mary, we cannot sit at the feet of Jesus and hear him speak. But we do hear the words of Jesus in the text of the Bible, where the words of Jesus and the words of God come together to form a living word through which he speaks to us today. And whether you are worshiping with us on Zoom, YouTube, or in person, it means you are here. You're on the right track. And yet if we are honest, I think all of us can think over how we spend our time and find ways we can prioritize our time just a little better. Ways we can eliminate a little bit of the busyness or distractions in our lives and spend a little more time with Jesus. Knowing that what a friend we have in Jesus is more than just a hymn. The best way to deepen a friendship 
just to spend time and to get to know the friend a little better. The best way to get to know Jesus better is to spend time alone with him, focusing your attention on him and listening to his word. Our gospel reading leaves us in suspense. We do not know what happens next, whether Mary and Martha were reconciled, whether they were all able to enjoy the meal that Martha had prepared, whether Martha was finally able to sit and give her full attention to Jesus. But I rather think she did. We do know that Jesus invites all of us who are worried and distracted by many things to sit and rest in his presence, to hear his words of grace and truth, to know that we are loved and valued as children of God, to be renewed in faith and strengthened for service. Take time this week to invite Jesus into your home. There is need of only one thing, to focus our attention to our guest. Amen.